like facial hair look? Oh, you know, I was looking at my facial hair. So this is now going to get ready to go live on YouTube. So this is perfect. Welcome to Super User Saturday Live. Uh, so With Scott because Steiner. The, way, the way my beard is graying, right? It makes me think like, oh, I should probably just shave. I was, I, I get tempted to do this kind of stuff crazily, like just like facial hair look, like shave all of this. Oh, you know, I was looking at my facial hair, so this is now going to get ready yeah. to live on YouTube. So right, now I got to now I got to mute YouTube. So, <laughs> hey, Carlos. So, Carlos, where are you on your uh, welcome to the welcome to the journey? Where are you on your Salesforce journey? Like, are you? certified are you working <clears throat> are you trying to get certified uh, are you trying to work are you i am to- uh, a little a little bit of all i'm uh, i'm working i'm still not certified um i'll probably try to take it in the next four weeks or so um what I work for a small consulting company in kansas city um oh really just doing yeah just uh kind of helping out with odd and end projects but i definitely need to ramp up uh my certification game and uh, go full in, double down on Salesforce. So, how long have you, been, uh, how, have you uh, taken any classes, or have you just? Um, um, I've taken, you know, I've taken, so, I've taken some. Uh, uh, I, I did a free um, boot camp that was offered here in Kansas City from our community group, and just been studying. Uh, you know, I'm a trailhead ranger, so a lot of trailhead. A lot of trailheads, right? Um, yep. What, uh, uh, have you finished the certification certs, uh, trails for admin? Yes, I finished it. I just need to take it. Okay. Um, well, look, I got, we got a a online wire. (laughs) Thanks, Patrick. I'm going (laughs) to, I just saw Patrick's question. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to remember that Patrick, just so you know. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't remember that well because that's from a month ago. Oh no! Oh, oh, got it, got it, got it. Okay, so it what? All right. So what I don't if, like about if you're talking Catholic, about if, if you're yeah, talking yeah, about I, what I think you're talking about. Yeah, I am. So let me just see when see what updated means. Uh, Hmm. that's not a good field so i'm looking at some fields in that other system we use to collect these so what do you what, what um so carlos you you which one after i mean so carlos first of all that's a great question your question is which cert you, you want to know which cert to take after admin correct you gotta like, get um, admin done first right yeah yeah right so so yes and then those cert after admin is oops the cert after admin i would recommend platform app build what do you think patrick well, or carlos already working with the consulting company i would go for i would go for sales cloud sales or service cloud consulting yeah like so it, it also depends on your experience so like s- sales cloud the sales cloud consulting exam for me was a lot easier um because of experience outside of Salesforce. Yeah. Platform map builder is very specifically, I mean, it's only Salesforce. Right. So if you, if you're stronger in things like, well, which automation to pick uh, or user interface stuff, platform map builder is probably easier. But then if you have, yeah, if you have business experience, uh, or working as a consultant, I think the sales cloud exam it might be easier. But there varies. There's strong overlap with okay. both of those in the admin test. So I would just so, keep going. Whatever you do, just keep just like sign up for the next one right after. Yeah, one of the one of the um, I'm trying to find my little uh, one of my. Um, so I'll tell you what, you know, for me, what I did was, uh, you know, I did admin, sales cloud, service cloud, platform app builder, and I'm working on my advanced 
uh, right? And my next one is advanced. But but look, but what happened? Um, what happened? I also I also have an instructor certification from Salesforce, but it doesn't count as like it, it doesn't that certification doesn't show up through Web Assessor. That's just because it shows up because I get you know put on sales training classes with Salesforce. But I would say so. One of the ways I've described it before is um, when you are. So you got to get admin first. That's the one you have to maintain to hold all your others. If you lose your admin cert, you'll all your others are at risk. Not all, but it used to be all, but I don't know what it is now officially, but that's the one that you got to maintain. It'll, it'll be connected, but the, 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 the type. So admin platform, app builders, sales cloud, service cloud, they all kind of touch the same standard objects. Right. And because of that, um uh it's they, they the studying overlaps that's why those four whatever order you get them in create what i call the the foundation of your house of salesforce knowledge right you think about a box that, that completes all four sides of a box and then the fifth uh i would say is really the one that is true to the path you want to take so the fifth one, right? If you think about a roof of a house, unlike my house, which is a flat roof house, the fifth one is um, going to uh, provide you, Steiner. Oh, you're gonna look at, nice. It's, thanks. Um, the, the fifth one, so to speak, is the roof of the house. And that arrow is gonna point you in the direction you wanna take your career in Salesforce. Oh, nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, mine's reverse. That's what you meant by reverse, Steiner. I get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Um, and friends of mine, and I got—I remember that guy now. I, I used to—I used to go to wrestling and do those kind of things for fun. He—he he, he owns a Shoney's not far from you. He owns a Shoney's here in town. I got to put him on my list. I definitely got to put him on my oh, list. This is like up up in like Gwinnett or something. Oh wow! I didn't even know there were Shoney's anymore. Um, that's how I got Shoney's was it the might best be old. He may, not, he may not, he may not own one anymore. I don't know. Right, right, right. So, so you're but by the time you get those four certs and the experience you're getting right now, Carlos, you're going to kind of know what you should start to know what you like to do, what you don't like to do, what you know, what other skills you want to develop. You want to go toward architect, you want to go toward developer. Right, but you you really have the four solid certs to do just about anything in almost any direction, right? Those four give you a solid base or a foundation. And then your fifth one um, is, uh, you know, like I said, that should be the, the directional one where you want to go. Like you really like it doing, you know, general stuff, then I would say advanced admin ought to be your fifth, right? Because advanced admin really takes you deep into the, the record securities and inventories, understanding those things that, you know, for operational purposes, uh, or if you're going to be an operations person, advanced admin is great for that. When you have a platform app builder, sales cloud, service cloud. And then, and even after that, you know, you could take sales cloud and, and, and grab, you know, the marketing clouds or get really good at the high velocity sales features or some of the other sales tools that are available, you know, dive deep in lightning, uh, dialer and and other things that sales uses right uh, maybe even cpq click price quoting that's a but that's a, sometimes that's a you know that's a very you'll stay busy with cpq if that's what you end up getting and then, but if you don't like all that stuff or if you're not enough experience with it you maybe you get service i'd, I'd jump on field service uh, salesforce field service uh and get that cert so that's a good question i think, I think in terms of career progression there's more value in the consultant exams no no i think you need platform, than the platform app builder no, as no, far no, as I, like which one to get next yeah yeah but for so, carlos i would probably just say well what's your experience carlos? by the by the focus on force 
practice tests for the for platform app builder and sales cloud consultant and just see which one you do better on and take that next. That's a good, that's really good advice. And um, yeah, I, and I wouldn't even try to advanced admin until you've actually had experience with 30 or 40 different orgs and doing, you know, repair work or configuration work or, you know, project work inside of those. Um, just because the advanced admin test that I've already failed once, uh, maybe twice, I can't remember, uh, takes, you have to take the, oh, I didn't really take the class. I registered for the class, got the materials, didn't pay attention in class, didn't study, and then I took the test. And you know how that goes. So <laughs> Sounds like my um, study. That's, that's not necessarily the best study methodology but um that does you know that you know wait for that one but i gotta tell you i know a guy i work with who um is acting acting as the chief architect for a consulting partner and he only has admin and platform app builder certs so i and i know i know patrick has worked in an org where the dumbest decisions ever were made, implemented, and even though they were dumb decisions, they were implemented poorly. Would you agree, Patrick? Like the way there was a company that recreated the leads object instead of using the leads object. By someone, advanced, with, by someone and, with advanced admin. Exactly. So, wow. and, and so, and they, and the way they did it was even dumber the way they executed it, right? Like, so it wasn't even like they did a good job recreating leads. They did a bad job recreating leads as opposed to they would have done better. What do you think, Patrick? They would have done better had they done a bad job just customizing the lead object with all their bad decision-making capabilities and just not recreated something else? Well, that's not to discount that they did that too. Right. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know... Uh, the good news is Salesforce is completely customizable. The bad news is almost anybody can customize it. So, um, you know, I've been having this discussion, not, not a fervent discussion, but a slight discussion. Salesforce released a new admin training class. Uh, they updated the, curri- you know, the curriculum and, the, and they added more flow, which I thought was great. The problem is it's the essentials admin class and they added flow to it. Like, and, and the, and here's the situation. And I just taught a class this week and and one last month with the new materials. When Salesforce first created the admin certification, there was a, there was workflow. I don't even, I think workflow rules, assignment rules, respond, you know, the workflow technology was, just coming out or had you know been out i don't think they had the certification before automation but maybe they did but think about all that salesforce could do now back from 2005 you know 17 years later the role of an administrator they've added a lot more permissions on the system administrator profile and and anybody with a system administrator profile, whether they have one day experience or they've been in the ecosystem since 1999, has the power to do all the same damage in an org. So personally, I think, you know, they ought to consider a different standard profile for a system administrator and then create one that's like the system administrator today called the, you know, the platform app builder. Uh, which, but they won't do, I mean, that'll never happen, right? It's just too ingrained. It's too automatic. And, and it would mess up the people who are not certified, but can do the, you know, can do the work and it messes up all the end users for the people who are certified and can't do the work. You know, I, um, I had a buddy of mine send me a job application for Piedmont hospital and they're looking for a, a Salesforce person and in the job description 
They had all the things that a good admin should be able to do and consultant. Really what they were talking about was admin, trainer, consultant kind of thing. And when they put down at the bottom required certifications, which certification do you think they put at the bottom of the page? Just the admin. Developer. Developer. What do you think? What do you think? And if they, if they don't, so they don't even know how to write a job description. So I applied for the job in the hopes that I would get an interview just so I could tell them how wrong their job description is on the meter web. <laughs> so what kind of work do you like to do, Carlos? I mean, you're in this Salesforce thing, right? Mm -hmm. What what branch of the military are you in and, and what, um, what, what kind of work do you like to do? What, uh, what kind of experience do you have? I was in the Navy a long, long time ago. Um, my prior experience, um, I was in, a, in the IT sphere, a lot of client server, Unix, Oracle, um, and uh, had to uh, switch gears during the pandemic. So that's when I kind of made the shift into Salesforce. Uh, right now, just doing a lot of lower end admin stuff, um, yeah. user administration, uh, you know, profiles. Um, also uh, getting into a little touch of health cloud, which is kind of cool, but again, um, low end, we've got a developer that's doing most of that, but just um, uh, doing the low hanging fruit that he doesn't want to do with uh, our health cloud implementation, uh, which mm -hmm. is really cool. So yeah. um, besides that, just again, like what you're saying, just trying to figure out what I want to do. Uh, I've got the goal of uh, taking uh, my test early June. Do you have um, it scheduled yet? Do you have it? Did you have you bought the ticket to the ride? Yep. Yeah. What day, uh, what day are you taking the test? June 3rd. Nice. That's and, a Friday. Uh, yep. Like Friday at like 10 a.m. or something like that, I think. So. And so let me ask you this. Is are you taking it online or a testing center? Online. All right, great. Do you have the next 27 hours blocked off till, <laughs> till Saturday, Saturday at 10, 1130, 12, 10 to one o'clock. So yeah. Yeah. Do you have, I, you have I, Saturday till one o'clock blocked off? I do not. Why should okay. I? Well, I would say here's a testing strategy, Ready? Right? Here's testing strategy. You can retake the test if you fail. Mm -hmm. And within, you could reschedule within one day. So you can reschedule that test Saturday at, let's just say it's 1130. Mm -hmm. As soon as you can reschedule it, right? right. Now you may, may not be able to reschedule it that soon because if it's online, it's got to be proctored. You got to be able to schedule it, right? Mm -hmm. But find the closest date that, you know, when you go to look to reschedule, if you fail the test, take the, take, retake that test as soon as you can, mm -hmm. because everything on the test is still fresh in your mind. Right. Okay. And after the, if you do fail the test after the test, then, um, you know, write down when you get that, you, you're going to get, have you taken the practice test from Salesforce yet? The $20 practice test from Salesforce? No, I haven't. I've heard mixed reviews on that. You think I should? What's the mixed reviews you've heard? Some people say it's nothing like um, the actual test, that it didn't help them at all. Yeah. But I don't know. Help I don't you know just get familiar with the, with the questions. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly the right. format so, of a Salesforce test is different from any other test you'll, you'll ever take. It's, okay. it's a very well done test, which means it's tricky as hell. It's hard and it's, and they have to do things a certain way. Now I, I, when I teach the admin class, I talk about this, like, so the, it's a, the hardest test in the world to develop effectively is a multiple choice test. And with Salesforce, it's even harder because if you say the, if you use the correct terminology in the question, you sort of give away the answer in some cases, right? Mm -hmm. So it makes it easier to identify. 
So they have to violate what I call the linguistic accuracy of the questions in order that you find the accuracy in the answers. So you got to watch. They'll be, you know, and they're very tricky about putting one word in the question or one word in the answer that, you know, is the defining rod of the right answer. And so taking the Salesforce practice test online gives you the exact experience you're going to have when you take it online for real, right? Gotcha. And there's value in that. Yes, the questions are a little outdated. The practice test hasn't been updated in a while. I know because I would take the practice test for my classes as part of the review. And pretty soon I noticed after doing it 10 times, the, chest, the test never changed. So the 60 questions you get were old and the same. So then now back in 2018, I curated about 104 questions from multiple attempts at the practice test. So I, I did find a bank of 104 and I have those mm -hmm. questions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in a document that you, you can have as, as being a part of this live call and I'm happy to give it to you. Mm -hmm. And normally charge $100 for that. But for you, because I don't have any mechanism to actually charge that, uh, actually <laughs> pr promote it in the world anymore. I took it all down. and uh, But I'll give it to you for free. It's 104 questions. And I, I plug in answers and videos. I explain the answers and videos. But what I'll tell you, if you took that 104 questions and analyzed every answer, that's 400 and 16 almost answers, not really quite that right. many, right? But, but the, right. you know, true, false, and all that. You will learn more about Salesforce. It'll probably take, what do you think, Patrick? Those 100 more questions. Uh, if, because if you analyze every answer, you'll learn so much about Salesforce. Like, even if you get the focus on force practice questions, right? They do a good job of explaining the, the you know, the, why the answer's right, why it's wrong, and they send you to trails and help docs. They've really come a long way in the last couple of years. Patrick, have you grabbed a focus on force recently? As a matter of fact, they just partnered with Stony Point if people want to take live classes. Um, but they are, um, they do a good job in that. The only thing they don't do is encourage you to go test all the attempt all the answers in a, in a, you know, like a dev or. Cause if you do that, you're going to go, Oh, of course I can't assign a, a, a folder to a profile. Duh. That's not one of the choices on the screen. Right? right. And if you, if you get close to that, so that that's super helpful. You know, that's what I would say. The only thing, I, and I would take it with Salesforce because you're taking it online. It's going to give you the same experience. And you can practice. And here's the other thing that I'll tell you. How do you know what kind of test taker you are? Um, <clears throat> no. How would okay. you define that? That's great. That's good. See, that's that's good. I asked an ambiguous question. You had no context. So I give you the answer. So yes, yeah, the better question. So do you get nervous during a test? Are you relaxed during a test? Do you get uh, like uh, frustrated during the test? Like, do you have a certain emotional um, you, state that you sit by consistent usually pretty relaxed i'd say if anything maybe anxious anxious but um i'm usually a pretty decent test taker so okay so you're not you don't have any test anxiety or anything no, i mean not no. some people freeze up on tests like they really know the subject but the fact that they're taking a test really screws them up right mm -hmm. so what i'd say is whatever your whatever way However you feel, however you like consider your emotional or mental state that's consistent with the way you take a test, study for a test in that same consistent state. And that's the good news about the night, the 105 minute online Salesforce practice test. If you're taking the test online and you take that test online and you find that you get, oh, oh I got, I'm running out of time, guy, then 
then that's a good simulation for how you should then go and study for the for the test when you're going through those practice tests that are timed and the ones that are not timed. Make sure you're the same way. Make sure you're just as nervous as you get. You know what I mean? So that right. your brain will recall better at the at the same. Think of it as like a frequency, right? You'll tune in your memory uh, with the way you study. So studying and and, mem- and, and re- recall tend to be on like the same frequency. So it's good. That'd be good, man, to do that. Um, uh, I was thinking about Patrick doing a, a contest, uh, like a, like a, uh, a challenge for, for, I call it zero to hero. And you got four, months to get four certs starting with the admin then platform app builder then sales cloud then service cloud and i was gonna this is i was just spawning an idea right like it's the way i was gonna do it was 16 uh, i was gonna charge 1700 dollars for the challenge and if you get all four certs done in four weeks, you get 100% of your money back. If you get it done in eight weeks, you get 75% of your money back. If you do it in 12 weeks, you get 50% of your money back. If you get it done in 16 weeks, you get 25% of your money back. And all the trainings available to you, right? Trailheads, videos, live Q&A calls, coaching, whatever that's all available. Um, and then anything over 16 weeks, um, you get 0% back. But, you know, um, I was going to do something on that. But it's uh, that was just an idea that I had. Like, But I don't know if there's anybody really wants to take that challenge. You can just do that challenge on your own. But, you know, kind of maybe set that up for yourself, right, as a challenge. Like put 1600 bucks aside and then say, I'm, you know, that's my cert expense money right 200 bucks plus two retakes on each test comes out to be the same thing you know for if you can knock it out because the more you immerse yourself in it the more it's going to go hey do you have um do you work do you work for a company right now did you say the company you work for yeah it's a small mom and pop <clears throat> dlh Mark. consultant it's it's just it's yes they are a salesforce partner though they're dlh consultant where are they located Kansas City, Missouri. It's Kansas literally City. four people. <laughs> you know, I know with four people, you can do probably two, three million dollars in revenue. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's he's killing it. So what does he specialize in? Uh sales cloud and service cloud. Well, they're your next two certs after admin, for sure. Yeah. What do you like? And um, and you have an IT background. Do you have a sales background? Have you done things in sales? No, um, not directly. No. I've supported sales before, but nothing. Yeah. You have? Yeah. I used to work at a sprint back in the day and supported. uh, Nice. Did when you were in the Navy, did you ever deal with knucklehead Marines? Oh yeah. So the, 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 the Marines are to the Navy what sales is to operations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's not the way we want to do it. Mm, yeah. Got gotcha, you, yeah. buddy. <laughs> you don't tell me how to drive the boat. I won't tell you how to jump <laughs> off into the, into the beach, right? Right, right. So, yeah. So June 3rd, man, that's good. So what's your plan between now and June 3rd besides this crazy call on the Saturday? You got a month. You have uh, laid out. What's your plan for this? Yes. So um, I try to break my studying down into blocks. So I'll do 40. I did got the whole focus on force um, practice test and the uh, study guide. So I'll uh, study the study guide for 45 minutes, take a break, and then take the test on that section. I'll try to take two tests on that section. Um, and just kind of going through day by day. So like two hour blocks, kind of 45, 45, with like a little break in between of practice, practice test and study guide. And then uh, 
I want to go over and kind of redo some of the trailhead stuff that I'm, I'm weak on um, just to kind of reinforce that. Yeah. Uh, and I'll probably go back and take that web assessor, you know, since you recommended that. I mean, I, yeah, it's not going to, it's not going to hurt you. Now I'll tell you a little secret about the web assessor. When you take it for yourself, <clears throat> they don't tell you what questions and answers you got wrong. Right. But you will get a score. But what I would recommend or what I've heard other people could, I'm not going to recommend it. I would take my recommendation back, <laughs> but I've heard other people do this. I'll tell you what I heard. I've seen other people do. They open a word doc and they copy and paste each question into the word doc and then they answer it. Mm -hmm. And then at the very end, before they submit, they copy and paste the, the review of all, like you have a mark the question review, you have all 60 mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. And then you can copy that last one with all of your answers, put that in the Word doc, hit submit. And then whatever your score is, doesn't matter. Yeah. Because really you don't even need your answers because what I would say do then, and just like I'll focus on fours, if go like I would highly recommend that part of reviewing the materials, I would, I would say skip reviewing the materials a bit. If you've already if you've already gone through all of the trails and the material, you probably you understand the things. Right. What you now need to do is get good at identifying wrong answers, mm -hmm. and that is go evaluate wrong answers. Because in the process of evaluating wrong answers, you're going to get really tuned in to again how Salesforce writes the test, the words they put in there, and you know you got to be careful of words like all, can't. You know, and I tell my class all the time, think about it. Think about Salesforce having the tallest building on the West Coast. I think, I don't know if it's the tallest building in the country, but it's definitely the tallest building sitting on an active earthquake fault. <laughs> yeah. Right? So yeah. if you're going to build the tallest building on an earthquake fault, you got to have a lot of money. You got to have a lot of ego. You got to have a lot of pride, right? So one of the things that one of my students figured out was when we we're doing all these practice tests at Mason Frank was Salesforce never picks an answer, never picks an answer that says they can't do something. <laughs> Salesforce right. can't do that. Never an answer. Have you noticed that Patrick? Like in the, in the answer, never can. And Salesforce will never let you do something that'll make it look bad to a user in real life. Like you can't deactivate a user that's in any kind of automation. Right. You notice that? You know why? Because mm -hmm. it would break the automation. And Salesforce is not yeah. going to let you, they're not going to let you blame them for breaking something that you did, which is taking right. an active user out of automation. So that's the mindset you got to think about on all the scenarios is that Salesforce is, pretty proud of themselves. They're pretty arrogant. They're pretty certain. Like you don't become number one by admitting, think about Trump. I saw Trump live in 2003 or 2004 in one of these massive seminars. And one of the things he said was never admit you're wrong. Top 10 rules for success, according to Trump. One of the yeah. ones I remember him saying was never admit you're wrong. Never admit a weakness. That's yeah. what it was. He said, if they ask you in a job interview, what's your weakness? He goes, I don't have any weaknesses. Let that be your weakness that you never admit you have a weakness yeah. but never admit it that's like you know if you and you watch trump's presidency I mean, he clearly did that you know yeah and, that, and so so there you go salesforce will that's never admit it. what it can't do and it'll always admit what it can do and if you get good at identifying the requirements of the question identifying the requirements of the question and identifying whether or not an answer meets all of the requirements. That's a good consultant skill, by the way. Wouldn't you agree, Patrick? Right. Yeah. Like if a customer says, I want to make more sales, you go, that ain't enough requirements, right? What do you mean by more sales? More sales of what? How do you, what do you sell? How do you sell? Like you start to get down to requirements. That's a good skill that you can actually start to develop as a test taking skill, but then move forward, um, you know, as you go. 
Thank you. Like, yeah, yeah, man, it's all good. And then, you know, they, they also test you on, if you look at the admin curriculum that Salesforce promotes for their class, that admin curriculum, it, the context for that curriculum is, um, and even a developer org is, is like this. They're, you're the new admin at a company that implemented Salesforce six months to a year ago. Somebody built some things, but that person's gone and now it's your job to take over. Mm -hmm. That's the context of the test. Because that's the frame they want you thinking about. If you had to do that every day of the week, you had to go through those steps every day of the week, like the five days of the class, and repeat every week those same things, that's what they're going to test you on. Do you understand organizational access and, and security and controls around that? Do you understand object access, security and controls around that? Do you understand record access, security and controls, and then field access, security and controls, Right. That's the fundamental job of an admin is to is to protect the organization. And then their job is once the organization is protected, then you can start collecting the kinds of data that represent the kinds of work and the things you do in your business. So people don't have to say what they did. They can record it with data. And then can you report on that? And then can you... Um, automate it once you know that the things that are happening are supposed to happen can you automate that that's it can you automate as much as possible to make it efficient so it comes from it starts with uh design configuration uh, uh, validation and then automation and i just made that up um but you design it, right? You design your security model. You design, right? You, you, you design Salesforce to match your business as close to standard as possible. That's always the goal, right? And then you do configuration to give as much customization that standard didn't handle. And then your reporting and analytics and dashboards, uh, all that's validating the data that's going in and the data that's going out as you've designed it and configured it. And then you can automate all the things in that from a gap point of view. So DCVA, design, would you say that's pretty accurate, Patrick? That, that, that's the, right? It, really it's every, every small project, every problem resolution, you gotta design it within the context of your business then configure it in the context of Salesforce and then make sure that, that what you designed is actually matching and working and, and get that validation. And then you can start to automate it. Then you can start moving data from one system to another, one record to another, one field to another. Kind of fun stuff. What, what area of the world, you live, you, live in, you, live in case, you live in Kansas City, Missouri or Kansas City, Kansas? Or like uh, Kansas City. Which one? Um, well, you know it well. Well, yeah, Overland Park, exactly. Yeah. Overland Park. Have you ever been to Overland Park, Patrick? If 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 you get lost in Overland Park, they should take you to Arkansas and drop you in the woods and leave you <laughs> there forever because you're used. It's a straight square grid. Yeah. They they ain't a curved <laughs> curb in the entire city. Is that right? I mean, you know, it goes exactly. by number. It goes numbers one way and it's street name. It doesn't matter street names. You just cross street is yeah. whatever, you know, how far somebody lives. Uh, it's like Dallas, Atlanta, Houston. The further you get from the city, you don't know how far you are from the city in those cities, right? You just know you're outside the perimeter, inside the perimeter, those kind of things. But in Overland Park, you know exactly what their cross street is, how far away they are from you. Just... A big, they got good barbecue, That's but true. not much creativity anywhere else. <laughs> so I had a couple of other questions that came through. Carlos, did you get all your questions answered? I did. Thank you very much. Um, uh, let's see. The only one was, oh, she just signed up to be a part of the, the group. She just wanted to continue to learn. Um, is there any 
questions or other situations anybody's in that they want to talk about for this class? I thought maybe we'd go over a couple of uh, questions and answers if you're interested in it, but we don't have to. We don't, you all want to do something like that? Is that fun, Patrick? Or you have something you want to talk about, Patrick? Not really. I'll tell you one thing I found interesting. I've been working a project since June of last year, thinking that a group of users was coming into Salesforce, which they're coming into Salesforce. Actually, they're already in. They're, they're not trained. We're going live on May 23rd, treating it like a go live project. And <laughs> the whole, however many months I've been doing this, and I got to talk to Patrick, our, our mutual friend. Uh, I learned on Friday, we're not designing anything for them. We're just importing their data into our system. I'm like, oh, well, there's, well, that's interesting. I missed that memo early on. But everybody's been relating to this whole group of people like, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Let's, how do you do? What are your requirements? Your requirements are to follow our sales force. That's what I find out Friday morning. That's their requirement. They've been, they've been treating these people as if they do something different than what the company does. Instead of just mapping the data and training them how to use Salesforce the way it's already is, the way it's going to be, they've been pretending as if they're designing something new for them and not a damn thing has been new. And I'm like, oh, my job just got different, much easier. I was, I was in the wrong frame of mind the whole time until Friday. Um, I just have to figure out how to tell them that I probably should have noticed that early on, <laughs> earlier on, <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't notice till Friday. The admin and I were talking about the situation and we're like, oh, so that was, maybe I was a little distracted during the last year for other reasons we can't talk about. Um. So what do y'all what do y'all what do y'all want to talk about in this live session? Nobody else has a question. How long have you been retired from the military, Carlos? Did we lose him? Sorry, uh, That's right. I didn't retire. I only did. I only did like four years. Um, Good for enlisted. you, man. Yeah. Good for you. I only did four years enlisted too, and then I did five and a half years as an officer. I liked it better as an officer. I'm um, sure you did. <laughs> life was good. wasn't great. wasn't that great, but it was good. It was better. So uh, let me actually. I'm gonna throw up a slide. I'll throw up a couple slides I used this week with Stony Point. Just actually, I'm not. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to a website I went to, which um, which was. Which is, I'll look it up and then go to it. Which is Salesforce. Education. exam guide so i do i think there's a lot of uh value in um the ex examining the exam guide and the exam guide also gives you some context because i was teaching a class this week get the exam guide come on now um you know, and, and it kind of gave me a little more context. I, I actually read the exam guide hmm, uh, in class this week, and it helped me with some context around the way and why they asked the questions, right? So they're sort of situational questions. And I say sort of because given the context of the question, um, they – so – Let's see. Da, 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 da. Exam outline. Is that the one? There it is. Exam outline. So 
Describe the information found in the company settings. Where uh, This is a test for you, Carlos. Describe the information found in the company settings. Where do you find company settings? Uh, company settings is found under setup. Uh, That's it. Right there. I would just, you got I, would just uh, I, I would just cheat. Yeah, just put a company settings into this quick find. And... No, no. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. That's exactly how you do your prep. Um, let me open up my org real quick. That's exactly. There's Scott. What was Scott? Did Scott Steiner's character have a name, Patrick? Squirrel Whisperer. Was he always just Scott Steiner? Well, one he had Big Papa Pump. That's what it was. I remember that. Big Papa Pump. So uh, I there was a period of my life where I watched quite a bit of less, quite a bit of wrestling. Have you ever been to a live wrestling event? I've actually wrestled been the uh, bell keeper, bell ringer for for some local wrestling promotions. Nice. How about you, Carlos? Played, played the wrestlers' music and all that. I think I've been to one in my life when I was in my late teens. Yeah, you got to do it when you're drinking age. Uh, I went to Talladega a couple weekends ago to watch the NASCAR race. A buddy of mine flew down from New England. And he was flying down with his son. And he, he took me to my first Sunday race at Atlanta Motor Speedway a few years ago prior to pandemic. And uh, I was like, that was a lot of fun. But the race, the race, I can watch the race on TV. But the crowd, you can only see the crowd at the race. And that Talladega crowd was rich. So anyway, so it was rich. So when you, you look something like that, right? You see company settings. Yeah, these are all the company settings. What kind of information can you find? So go look. There's business hours. And they ask about the company information page. Right. So you got to what's distinct about each one of those. And you got to click around. But like there's your default, there's your licenses, your permission sets, features, usage, blah, 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 blah. All that stuff that's right there on the page. And they really talk about it. What can you find? What are the default settings? Like, like what does the company information do? It sets the defaults for all the users, but it also sets a reference point so that. Other questions, like Salesforce is global, it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all the different languages around the globe, all the different currencies. You've got to be able to have your org translate any of those variables distinct, like, you're, you know, if you're in San Francisco, any of your variables, did I lose Patrick? I lost Patrick. Um, yeah, Patrick had to go. Any of those variables has to translate. What does it translate from when you're in San Francisco as a company, but your sales leaders in New York and your sales teams in Japan? What, between the company and both of those as a translation. So why shouldn't there be a why shouldn't that also translate between San Francisco, uh, New York, and Japan, right? Or New York and Spain, whatever those are. Um, Distinguish and understand the administration of declarative configuration of the user interface. You go back here and you go, where's user interface? Uh, there's user engagement, there's user interface, right? So you got to look at all, you can't, all of these won't happen on the admin test, but you know, it's all there, but they're talking about user interface. You go to the lower one and that helps pick it up as well. Uh, I will tell you two answers. If to have people edit a list view, um, you got to have enable inline editing and enable enhanced lists. How do I know? Because I've taught the class enough and, you know, yeah. done that stuff. And then occasion, now they screwed up the help. David Lou used to say, look at the help documents. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. But Salesforce literally screwed up the help. And I mean that it doesn't go contextual anymore. Maybe I'll prove me wrong, but a couple of places I went to since they've redesigned help, 
it doesn't take you directly to the help document you're looking for anymore. So you've literally got to go back and type in user interface. And user interface settings, maybe. And then you can go to the, the documents. But it, to me, it's it had a really great, I would take just documentation and then go for user interface uh, settings. And then, you know, if you're confused about a subject, definitely look at it, right? And this is how you figure out what to go study. If you failed one of these sections, then go into this exam guide and can you describe standard object architecture and the relationship model? You know, and uh, these are all great, like all those things, right? And so where do you go there? You go to the schema builder, you know, because it's all displayed right there in the schema builder. Have you ever used the schema builder? Uh, yes, it's, it's a little bit of a mess. I, I hate the view, but. <laughs> it's not as elegant as you probably like it to be, but I use this for my class this week. And I said, this is the sales model, right? I mean, there's a much, there's a whole list of, um, there's a whole list of uh, diagrams that go in exact detail of how things are recorded. But I don't think you need to go that granular, but like leads are a standalone object. They don't connect to anything, right? And a lead converts into an account with a opportunity and a contact. Voila, right? And you could take a look at that and say, oh, I get it now. A little bit of business, a little bit of personal, maybe an opportunity. Great. And an opportunity is going to pick a price book in order to grab a price book entry. What's a price book entry? Well, that's a product. Huh. So the opportunity is going to grab all that. What do you do with a product? Well, from when you put all that together on an opportunity, you can create a quote. And that quote might include a contract. But if they say yes, that all becomes an asset of the company. That product trans travels to become an asset. And when, the when you have problems with your asset, right? You bought the widget and the widget no longer works. You bought the iPhone and it's quit working. You call up, they already know what you bought, where it came from. And how, we could track the whole thing back for the case, which will have a contact on it, which we could, you know, we could track back to who did what, where, when, why, and how. So it's pretty, that's a, another way to get ready for it. So anyway. Um, well, good. Was this useful of your time, Carlos? Was this a useful value of your time? Oh yeah, definitely. Today? Definitely appreciate it. I love, I love your teaching style too. So that's why. Well, thanks. No, I appreciate that. I yeah, great. So do you have any other questions or comments or concerns? I'm good. How can I, I'm going to take you up on that, uh, that. I'm working on it right test now. Package. All right. I got your phone number, your email. I got you. You can't, yep. you, you did all that. Yep. So. Let me see if I got, um, here's what I'm gonna do for you. Uh, no, I'm gonna send, I'm sending you the right thing. So I've got a, I gotta email you that link to that, um, uh, my 104 practice questions. Mm -hmm. It'll, there's a lot, it's just a Google form that I've, that, that you fill out and then it'll give you a score at the end. And then I'm, I haven't finished loading up all of the answer videos uh, into the doc yet, but I'm working mm -hmm. on that. Um, and let me see if I have the, I'm going to send you two. The one that I just showed you here, the, the one that Salesforce provides, mm -hmm. that's 30 questions. There's more updated questions. You'll find more relevant on the test. And then I'll send you my 104 one. 101. Um, uh, I gotta do this. So I gotta create an email template. Dad, gum it. Um, <laughs> I 
And um, the first 50 don't have all the recordings in there, but the 51 to 104 have recordings. A couple of them are wrong, but the answers are right. I explained it wrong and I never re-recorded. I, got, I know question 55. Uh, if you find anything that's wrong, so if anything's changed or whatnot, let me know if I can update it. I will. Okay. Um, uh, and then here's the 30 question. And you can do, uh, mine is untimed, but um, uh, sales forces, you can go either way on it. And um, yeah, so there's that one. And then we'll do this one. So I mean, that's a little bonus for being here today. I appreciate and, it. Uh, whoops. Yeah, man. And go Navy. Appreciate the ride is how I say it. <laughs> we always like the ride, man. We always appreciate hey, it. Three-fourths of the earth is water. Right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so we do this. And we got that. And then uh, custom values. Right. Uh, thanks for being on the call today. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to uh, future content. And uh, thank you for all you do. For really yeah, man. It. And I am, uh, just so you know, let me end this with a little bit of my vision for what I'm trying to do here. So making this available, making this call, but in this call, I'd like to also make it a little more frequent, probably do it once or, tw once or twice during the week, you know, create a little more content, maybe a little shorter you know, like a, like a lunch bite kind of thing during the week. Um, I'm working on that, but I'm also, look, I've got an ulterior motive. Um, join this call. If you're trying to get your certification, join this call. If you already have a certification and you want to just collaborate with others, if you're working on a problem that you can't solve alone, send in the question and, you know, we'll address it live. And we'll also collaborate. So this is also my vision for this is a couple of things. So we come together. If you come together with problems, that's why I want to do it twice a week, or at least get to where I maybe even every, you know, like, you know, if you're, it's, it is the, the nature of the Ohana to help each other out. Right. That's right. what the communities are for. All that kind of stuff. However, live sessions are fun, engaging, and, you know, we can, you can get the live opinion and get context answered. When you go to the, 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 the digital version of, of, of the community, um, you don't know, uh, you don't know the context of the answer you're really giving somebody. So this is a time where you can actually share an org on your screen. We can all look at it. We can help you diagnose it. So it'll train you on real diagnosis and design and configuration verification. Uh, changes the verification instead of validation, verification, automation. And um, uh, and we can work on it together. And it, it's part of us growing a community of uh, Alexa, stop. And, um, and secretly, if you get better at doing your job, Alexa, stop. Alexa, uh, stop. And if you get really good at doing your job and you get a little free time, my ulterior motive, if you go to my website, sales and technology consultant, I mean, sales and technology.com, I've got a new offer for dedicated administrators where for small to mid-sized companies, I don't, you know, they could, if they want dedicated help, I want to be able to sign, I want to, I want to build an elite, I want to build a, an army of elite consultants that can serve the small to mid-sized market. And I mean elite, like we're engaged, we're always working together, we come together with problems, we, you know, we, we, we endeavor to do it right, you know, high standards. And, you know, there may be a company out there that can afford, can't afford a lot, but they can afford to pay 700 bucks, a couple hundred bucks a month to have one person look at their org one hour a week. And if I can teach you to become enough efficient enough 
to handle that customer for one hour a week, then that becomes your client. And we're always here to support you, supporting them too. You right. make money, they make money. And I got one client, one, one consultant working with me right now that literally works part-time for a couple of my clients and enough to buy a brand new car. Like, yeah. like I'm not talking about a, a Hyundai. I'm talking about a BMW, five series, brand new, $80,000 car with a $1,200 a month car note, right? So I'd love to have a bunch of part-time people working for sales and technology as a dedicated administrator to support the small and mid-sized market where companies can only afford, you know, three, you know, four to 800 bucks a month. That's not on that pricing is not on the website, but that yeah. pricing is kind of where I want to go with it. So yeah, thanks for being, um, uh, you know, tell people about the call and, and we'll do, I want to do more and more of them. And I plan to do more and more of them starting in July because I think my project's going to be over in June. So if it, the project is over in June, then voila, July is the date that it all comes together. Yep. Sounds good. Yeah, man. So thanks for being here and you got your assessment coming and anybody that attends these classes will get a free the 104 question assessment plus the 30 question assessment from Salesforce. So thanks for being here and you get that. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good, yeah. great weekend. You too, man. Bye-bye. So I'm writing an email that says we can all we All right, there we go. Thanks everybody for being here. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. And if you do comment, we'll get it. Thanks so much for being here. See you soon. See you in the next time.